Okay, this, uh, I was going to say this scene, this um, piece of cardstock is going to be a challenge to make into a scene, to say the least. I, this is just a kind of a throwaway, throwaway piece of um, test paper for um, a lot of the recent re-inker colors that I got um, that I was unfamiliar with because I don't have a lot of the colors that I purchased in pad form. Okay, now I also use this as just a splatter painting test uh, spray area because it was kind of dark. But that type of thing does not... Um, we can't stamp on it very well, so I'm just going to take this and I'm just, you know, this is a good example of what you can do with something like, you know, splatter, uh, splatter paint application of something like the Bleed Proof White, or if you had some uh, gel pen dots on some glossy cardstock, it's one of the most forgiving surfaces in terms of being able to just buff all that out of there, and I just did it with a paper towel here, um, and it comes right off. I mean, that one took a little bit of a, you know, it, not a lot of work, but, you know, I had to kind of rub on there. The, the gel pens, though, you know, it depends on what brand you're using, but sometimes that just comes off really easy. That being said, if you want those gel pen dots and the bleed, Mark, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof um, White to remain on there, I'd always recommend spray sealing, which I do anyway. Okay, so this is really limiting <laughs> right here with this big swatch of brown. I would never do that in a in a scene, but we're going to have to go with what we have here because that's the uh, the idea of this video here, kind of making something from nothing or starting off with kind of... Um, you know, uh, a limited uh, palette. It's not a, you know, blank canvas, as they say. It's uh, quite a, you know, set canvas, you know, by which to uh, make a scene. Okay, now I have this area right in here that's light, okay? And I'll do something with that in here. This little swatch down here is that some of that memento ink, and that's a little bit uh, lighter down there. It's definitely not as light as white, but it's okay. But this is really set here, so I'm going to have to try to do something with that. Now, I know that um, I have a lot more stamps, stamp tapes, not, not, you know, not more than some of you do. Some of you collect it all, but... Um, you can use kind of what I'm doing here as kind of fundamentals, you know, in terms of how you approach certain areas that can be considered a weakness in your scene, okay? You can always use things like, um, there's background, midground, and foreground, okay? Foreground is a really strong element that can be utilized, you know, in addition to creating scenic depth, but it can also be used to minimize um, kind of weaknesses within your scene. And usually when I have things in my foregrounds, I make them kind of dark. You know, darker things are usually a little bit closer to us. Not all the time, but, um, you know, in a lot of different types of settings, okay, because things are a little bit more intense and darker in value. The closer it is, if you see a tree really close to you and there's another tree three miles away, if it's the same type of tree, the one three miles away is going to look a little bit lighter or a lot lighter because of all the... Uh, moisture and dust in the air and things like that and when that light hits that distant object it's reflecting back and it looks lighter in uh, turn okay so you can use dark foregrounds can really solve a lot of problems that might come up within your scene so i'm going to use a pretty dark foreground here you know to um kind of remedy this chunk of a uh, brown that I have down there. Not that I dislike the color or anything like that, but just the shape. That was uh, the ground espresso. I do like that color, but just, you know, I'm starting off with something like that, and it looks, you know, it's rather awkward. Everything is kind of rather awkward in here. Um, having to start off with that, okay? So this is just going on with the boulders with lichen here. It's really similar to the ledge stamp, okay? This one's a little bit more um, textured and darker, so I'm going to go with this one. But you could certainly could use something like the ledge, or it could be, you know, a, a mound of, you know, a hill, grassy hill or something like that that you can uh, 
create in the foreground. Now I'm going at an angle here because that was the you know the angle that that uh, brown was uh, kind of applied in. So I'm just going to try and minimize that a little bit. We can stack this. We can put this stamp side by side, as that's the, kind of the concept of it. Or that was the uh, no, that was the concept of it in terms of the uh, design of it. Okay, so you can see I, you don't need to use any you know masking material. In fact, masking material would just make it more time consuming and whatnot. The stamp is designed to be just overlapped with minimal, I don't know, kind of fuss, as is the entire line. And it's trying to, I don't know, maximize given space within a given area and contribute to the overall whole. All right. That being said, they're just, you know, when it's like that, it's just trying to, you know, I'm trying to maximize someone's button in creating something, and I just, my idea of fun is to also, you know, if you can kind of minimize the um, fuss element within a given scene or project, whatever you're working on, you know, that to me is the, the, the ideal thing. I could make some designs that are, um, you know, that look okay or something like that, but it would require kind of more effort to use them in the way that um, would maximize their effectiveness. And uh, I don't know, there's always that sliding scale, you know, and I usually opt for kind of ease of use um, in order to achieve our goals within a you know, given project or scene, whatever we're working on. Okay, now I am going to stamp out. This to me looked like a ledge, okay? And this to me looked like water or something like that down there. I mean, it didn't look like that to me, but I was thinking I could do something with that idea in mind. So I figured kind of a body of water down here, like about like so. All right, now I'm masking this off, but you can see I'm, I have some of it showing. And if some of this gets into it, then so be it. That's fine, okay? All right, so this is the Seaside Cove Small. The big one, would, actually, maybe the bigger one would have been better because I have all this space down here, but this will be fine here. Maybe it's a, I don't know, a still body of water, like a pond or something like that. Maybe I'll put some more rocks over here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, put a little bit more pressure around that mask, too, okay? Even though I have a lot of that rock showing, okay? So there we have that. Let's see how that kind of blended in. But I've overlapped this rock in here, but see this little textures in here, whatnot? I mean, even if it goes in there, it's not really very apparent, right? And... That's the concept, again, that's the whole idea of these stabs. You just kind of overlap things and, uh, I don't know, it's also kind of the thing that's maybe the most different from other types of stamping that people might do, that, which is a lot mostly involved with um, the masking out of outlined imagery, okay? Imagery, you know, the 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 outline style of um, stamping, you stamp things out, there are a lot of outlines, and then you can, you know, do cutout masks and whatnot, and do stamp positioning, things like that. I love that look, though, but that's just not my idea of scenic stamping, where you're doing um, kind of modular systems where everything's kind of you want them all to blend together, so if you want everything to visually blend together, it just makes sense that you design the stamps to overlap one another, okay? It's one of the things that causes the most confusion, too, when someone that hasn't done that before kind of looks at the end result of um, some kind of project. They can't tell where one image ends and the other one begins, like this ledge right here, you, you know? Hopefully you can't really tell where one impression ends and the other one begins. I can see some similar patterns in there, but, um, you know, you want it to, you know, for the most part, to uh, kind of be, you know, very obscure, where, 
you know, the different images are um, beginning and ending. Okay, now this is my Tiny Rocks stamp. I'm going for a little bit of texture down here. I'll mask off this rock. Now this is a solid rock, so I'll mask closer, okay? That. Put some of these rocks down here like so. Right? So see that kind of carries out that idea of this little, I don't know, shoreline area. And I do have this smaller version of it right here, tiny rocks small. Okay. I'll blot it off once just so I just so I can get some kind of variation in value. So maybe it'll look a little bit different and more layered in this given area. So see that? This is definitely not a sandy beach. It's more of a rocky beach. You know, you can go kind of rock hunting and, I don't know, look for, I don't know, maybe some uh, quartz or something. <laughs> Okay, so we have that. All right, now, that might be good, to, you know, just for some sky up there. I was kind of debating on whether or not I wanted to put this um, lakeside cabin in here, which goes right on top of that shoreline if you wanted to. And I can put some trees over here. It might be kind of interesting. And I can do that because there's some white area in here, okay? If it was all dark like that and I stamped this over that, that darkness would be in that rooftop. And I usually like to keep my rooftops a little bit lighter, making um, something look a little bit more top lit. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I mean, that was, I don't know, it was something that popped into my head as far as something we could do here with that seaside cove small. I think what I'll do here, see these reflections down here? Because we already have this kind of this horizontal patterning going on in here, I think I'll wipe some of this off so it stamps out lighter in value in that given area. Okay, now I'm just going to try and match up this little line right here, the shoreline, okay? And I'll match it off with this um, horizon line of that stamp I'm going to be kind of peeking over here and I'll look at it on this side too and match it up roughly so I'm gonna do something here <laughs> this one matters a little bit more here I'll put a little mark right here on my stamp yeah where I can see that all right, so I have a little mark right here and mark right there. It doesn't matter in most scenes, but I'm kind of matching this up with my uh, uh, lakeside, I mean, a uh, seaside cove, and I want it to be pretty close, okay? I'm being a little bit more careful with these um, kind of something from nothing scenes because I want, you know, the idea is, you know, just it's about. I don't know, the, the, con, uh, the concept of this um, scene is just to try to maximize, you know, kind of, you know, uh, something where, you're, where we're starting off with weaknesses, okay? All right, now I'm going to put some um, trees up here, but I don't know, you can start to see this, you know, kind of coming together here. I mean, we still have this problem of the uh, sky here. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, strange looking with all that... Um, to a swatchy swirliness up there. I'm thinking about putting, I can put a moon in here because we have this little space of light still. Or I could put just some stars up there. Uh, let me go look around. Let me, let me see what we want to do here. Okay, I think I'll add in some trees and I think this moon will look pretty good in here. That I could do some things with some lighting right here. Uh, perhaps. Okay. Now, when I'm starting off with this background that has all these kind of swatches on here, I'm probably going a little bit darker with 
you know, certain objects, then maybe I would have if I'm starting off with a blank piece of paper because I'm, you know, the, you know, part of this whole process here is to conceal. Okay, another part is to blend in, you know, really, I don't know if the word is forcibly, but, um, you know, I, you know, there's, there's some problems in this, uh, you know, composition here, so just starting off with that, you know, some of the limitations of the, you know, like, paper, you know, like canvas, so to speak. Okay, this is the eerie moon. You can put any kind of moon back here. Um, if it was all colored in, though, and if I didn't have some lighter area, I probably wouldn't do a, you know, a moon, because the moon is supposed to be something nice and light. I don't want to do some kind of subtractive, I don't want to do some bleaching process or anything like that. All right. All right, so there's that moon in there. All right. And why don't we add in some additional tree forms right in the background. I don't, you know, actually that looks kind of cool like that too. Maybe I'll just add some over here. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to add some over here, if I wanted to just make that look like it's like a cove kind of opened up into the uh, the sea and whatnot. A little bit, I don't know, that looks pretty good. I have some trees that I'll put over here. I, I just, I don't know, I think this might look pretty good in here. I think I'll put it over here, but not, not, maybe not over there. All right. Let's do this one in Prussian blue, too. Let's do it in the same color that we did the, uh, the moon in. Okay, now I stamped the moon in dark blue. I could have stamped it in black, but I just wanted to go for a little bit of a different um, value, okay, then, uh, okay, now I've wiped off the bottom here, you've seen me do this before if you've watched some of these videos, it's a dry paper towel, see how much I've wiped off here, but I'm transitioning this from wet to dry down here, okay, I don't want just dry and then wet, you know, midway through, I'm kind of transitioning it, so it's drier down here, right? And as I move up, I'm taking off a little bit less ink, okay? So that it goes from wet to dry, and it should stamp out dark to light. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we have this nice silhouette of these trees right here, these pine trees. Right. Now this is pretty dark right here, so I don't know, maybe I'll wipe off a little bit more. So that where it overlaps these trees, maybe we'll still see, you know, a little bit of that, um, the silhouette of those trees that are in front of it, okay? Just an easy trick, okay? So transitions, you can utilize um, the moisture content of your given ink to create anything from the strongest value of it all the way down to white by just simply removing off some ink off of your stamp, okay? So we have something like that. That kind of represents a little bit of mist or something like that, you know, as you, you know, kind of lower line mist or whatnot. But anyway, see, if that tree was as, you know, the background right there was as dark as it is up here, I don't think we'd be able to see these um, forms as well, right? Because it would be dark on dark instead of dark on lighter right back there. It's a little trick there, okay? But, I mean, it's simple to do. I mean, we're not talking about um, some kind of, like, you know, real technical process right there at all. You know, you just, here's your mask and here's your, you know, kind of a, whatever, moisture variation. Okay, so we have that right there. All right, now let's see what we can do about blending this in, okay? Here's um, just a really simple kind of... Um, concept as far as lighting and here it goes okay we have our light source right there i want that moon to stay nice and light i mentioned before that i like to leave my rooftops light in that cabin so the fact that there was some white left on this piece of paper um allowed me to stamp that right in right in there and for that design to retain its lightness if i stamped it over dark that area in there would be colored that color right all right 
Okay, so, and we, we have some rounds right here. I'm going to bring in the, the foreground later, okay, with some darker tones and whatnot. I'll, maybe I'll use some Versafine from some, you know, some trees in here. But this is pretty much our, you know, our given composition right now. I think I'll be going for a little bit of a more violety toned um, color scheme in here, just for the fact that there's a lot of this uh, Lulu Lavender, I believe that's the color that's used in there. Or uh, that could be Dusty Concord too. Like I said, I'm not real familiar with a lot of these colors right here, so um, they're, you know, they're new to me, so um, I, I just got them. All right, so with those color schemes in mind, let's start to apply some colors. Let's go for a memento summer sky to start off with. It's a really fantastic light blue to start off with. And one of my recent um, acquisitions as far as colors go that I was testing on this paper right here is a reinker for my summer sky. Okay. I use that one a lot, so um, the colors that I use quite a bit I did buy re-inkers for, okay. Now you've seen me do a lot of um, kind of monochromatic, monotone. Um, okay, I found this on the web for do a lot of time tomorrow. I have no idea why that Siri just went off my phone right next to me. But I, I do a lot of scenes where if it's nighttime type of scene, I wouldn't see a lot of color in here, but I'm starting off with this brown, okay? So I'll do this ledge right here in a different kind of color scheme than probably what we would see in a nighttime situation where there's kind of an absence of a you know a lot of a lot of specific colors. You don't really see warm tones, but you know, by the light of the moon. Alright, so here's summer sky right here, okay? Let me see, is this tip here. Oh, I'm using the tip that I think I've already used. But I did recently clean my applicators here. Now this is going to be a much lighter um, value than the colors that I've already laid down in here. But this is kind of starting from scratch. Okay, the paper is I did this this little swatchy background um, test um, days ago. I don't know. Maybe it was, I don't think it's been two weeks, but it might be. Maybe it's two weeks ago. So this is this paper is really completely dry. All right. Now there might be some wet areas where I just stamp my images, but I'm talking about from those swatches of color. Okay, that were already down here. That brown is, you know, completely dry. So I'm just kind of reestablishing a moist background before I get into some of these other tones that I've already applied in here, okay? All right, so um, let's just go back to this idea of lighting in here, okay? So we have that moon in there, and it's now becoming kind of more of a definitive light source because I've darkened in the area, even, albeit with a very light value of blue here so far. And let's put a little bit of this color down in this water, but you know how light shines on the water? It means that there's just some areas of the water that are remaining light, okay? I am going to look at my imagery though, and I can see there's some lighter areas on the image, okay? There's that kind of sea foam or mist coming off the crest of the wave, so I'll try to put a little bit of tone underneath that, just like so. Okay. And I'll leave some of these areas a little bit lighter in here. I, maybe I used too much, you know, I colored off too much, but this is such a light hue, so when I move into my darker tones, I'll just kind of put out out here, and it'll look like this light is kind of shining off of the surface of the water. Okay, uh, so that's, uh, maybe I'll put a little in this cabin as well. I was thinking about leaving the cabin kind of a brownish tone, so it'll kind of create a little bit of continuity between this and the log, you know, the cabin. It's not really a log cabin, but, you know, a wooden cabin back there. Okay, but I do want a lot of this in my sky, all right? And I can put some of this down here as well into this um, 
beachy area. It wouldn't be bad to kind of have a little bit of a warmer tinge down there as well. Okay, summer sky. I bet you can't tell, you know, hardly anything happened, you know, barely. Well, I guess you can tell, but it is very light. Okay, here's a Memento Bahama Blue. It's kind of a medium tone, but, you know, when you apply it down, you kind of move it around. It's, you know, it's, it's still fairly light in value. I'm trying to remember, did I buy it? Can I get that? Uh, I was wondering if I got the re-inker for this one. I guess I didn't. Well, the pad is still fairly juicy, so... Okay, I'm just kind of applying that in my sky. Okay, now here we go into the water. But I'll just use less of it, okay, than I did with the summer sky. See how I'm going kind of in between these waves right here? And I'll just leave a little bit lighter of an area in there. See that? And I'll come in a little bit in here, kind of I'll make a little bit of a shadow for the, uh, the lakeside uh, cabin image. Okay. So see that kind of oscillation right there? It doesn't look like light is hitting it now, just by the simple fact that we didn't color it out. Okay, and we get this variation happening in the sky here. Kind of making it a little bit streaky. I kind of like that variation of tone, you know, throughout, um, throughout the scene, but also within a given space, okay? Danube blue, maybe? Uh, for as dark as this color is, by the time I usually get to it, it, it doesn't really read as uh, anything kind of resembling that color. If I put it on a white piece of paper that's very dry, though, you would be able to see that, um, that hue and that value of blue. But the paper is getting pretty saturated, I think, at this point in time. Okay, kind of come down in here in the seaside cove again. Okay. All right. I think I have some a little bit of a blueprint sketch. I always forget the name of these new colors. It's like I maximized my uh, internal hard drive space. Okay, I, I, just, I had it on my palette here from a couple days ago and it's, it's still moist. So I'm just going to use some of this right now. And <laughs> that is really dark. I, I can tell it's the color that I used right here in that little swatchy area. I like how this kind of this color though it, it separates a little bit so um, it leaves this little starry kind of speckled oops look at that I just put my nail into it and it just wiped right off see right there it kind of gives me a little bit of a I hesitate <laughs> to even suggest any sort of connection to it, but it there's kind of a more spontaneous, kind of watercolory feel to it. I'm not good at watercolors, and that really quick, spontaneous um, application of something. Okay. but it kind of feels like a little bit of that in some areas, okay? Just because I have to lay it down and, you know, just kind of go with it. All right, so we have that. It's a little bit streaky, but that's all right. Okay, now let me put some of this in my water as well. It's pretty juicy on my tip here, so I had to be careful not to over 
color anything, okay? It's kind of, it's really easy to add more, but sometimes it's kind of, you know, more of a challenge to remove something that you've already applied, especially in terms of something like dye-based inks that apply to a certain surface um, by staining it, okay? All right, so we can kind of see that lighting in there happening. This is almost a little bit too... Well, let me blot some of this off right here. I'll use a little bit of this drier version of it. Okay. Starting to kind of get a little bit more of the the gist of um, the lighting scheme in here as I go along. Okay, it's a little passage of light, I meaning I've just retained some of the lightness. So just don't color everything out. Sometimes I, I mean that's sometimes that's easier said than done. I mean I do it too. I just I just start coloring and. Uh, Kind of getting the swing of it and the flow, and then uh, I don't know. And then pretty soon we've just colored too much, and we've we don't have any of that light in a given area. And if that happens, you just have to make the area around. You know, let's say that got really dark. You know, using some of these colors, then you just have to make this out air, area out here even darker, so that those areas, you know, appear kind of lighter by um, contrast. Okay, this is really wet here. Every time I touch this, I'm leaving these um, fingerprints in here. I need to be really careful. When you start using a lot of um, re-inkers, you're applying a lot of ink, which I want. But sometimes you got to watch out for your touching, you know. Even if I was wearing a glove or something like that, I might streak something. Okay, now this is a Mento Desert Sand. This little ridge line right here, this rock outcropping was um, done in browns over here. So I'm using that same um, color scheme, okay? So I'm sticking with that color scheme. In other words, I'm not coloring this blue now, okay? I mean, I could probably if I took it really dark. Okay, let's see. I was talking about bringing in some of this color into my cabin area. All right, now this, I need to see hands off up there. This desert sand is, it's toned in that a little bit. It's very light in value though, so it's not going to be doing too, or leaving too much of a, a statement in terms of um, hue. Okay, antique linen. I love this color. It's pretty bright, um, but it's light uh, and pretty rich, okay? And it's not real bright, but it's brighter than a lot of tones would be at that value, which is very, very light, okay? So light and bright are two different things. And bright is a, you know, a, it, uh, it's about, brightness is about the relative intensity of something. Lightness is uh, the relative, you know, light and dark of a given in, term, in terms of colors, okay. So it's just, it's making this area a little bit more rich. You see, instead of just that one color of a uh, ground espresso, I knew it had something, I was thinking it was coffee something. I'll get these names down one of these days. I don't know, maybe not. Anytime I start remembering new things, sometimes I, for, I start forgetting the... Uh, things that I uh, know already. It's hard drive space. I'm out of it. <laughs> and I've been out of it for a long time. Okay, so there we go with that. Let's bring a little of this down here into this area down here in the, uh, the sand, okay? It just kind of warmed it up, you know, a touch right down in here. See that? Okay, so 
Okay, that was antique linen. Okay, let's just let's stick with our um, distress inks right now. A lot of you have distress inks, so let's go for a little bit more of that as well. Let's go with this walnut stain here, okay? Yeah, I see a little bit of it, not too much. There's not too much of a change. Okay. A little bit darker each time. Rich cocoa. Hmm. Okay. Actually, that one makes quite an impact in terms of value. It's quite a bit darker. Okay, now I like to vary, you know, my given space, so maybe I'll color in some of these areas, but don't just color in the whole thing uniformly. Maybe have a little bit of light and dark and interplay of it. Okay, so maybe I'll put some down here, like so, and I'll leave some areas. It's not always just leaving, like, the top or the bottom light. Okay, maybe I'll go, you know, some lightness over here, some lightness over here. This area over here is already very dark, though, so... Um, but that's also relative, right? Unless you're talking about the darkest black, then that's, you know, dark. But I can still make some areas over here darker, and this, you know, in turn, will seem lighter by contrast, especially if I brought in some black um, hue into it. Okay, so that was rich cocoa. Let's go with the Marvy dark brown. Okay. Marvies are very bright, very rich colors. Okay. Inks. Okay. See that right there? It's getting darker and darker. Now, for me, at this point in time in the scene, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm free of, you know, the, whatever, the confines of that, um, foundation that I started off with, you know, and the limitations of it. Now this is, I don't really see that at all anymore. I'm not really working around it, I'm just kind of working the objects as I would do any scene. Um, there we have that. <coughs> oh, uh, let's see, this is brown from Marvy. It's pretty bright. Pretty warm. It's a really a great color and ink to it. Blends really well with um, so many different uh, color schemes. I'm talking purples, greens, of course, with its own brownish tinged um, areas and color schemes and objects. Let's go with the black. It's the same black that I used to stamp out my imagery with, okay? This is still looking, this area on this um, kind of rock, foreground rock outcropping is, it looks fairly weak to me in terms of a visual statement. There's not a lot of contrast in it, so I'm going to try to keep working that. And uh, we'll kind of introduce some more of those um, kind of violet tones in there. I think purple and brown go really well together. Remember that? color scheme that we saw everywhere for a while there, you know, like brown and, uh, you know, pastel pinks and blues and whatnot, you know. I mean, I still like that color scheme. I don't know if it's uh, 
you know, still out there in terms of uh, kind of the fashion, you know, of the day or the color schemes of the day, but um, it's a good one, though, so. I'll try to bring that, or a small element. This is just too wet right now. In fact, it's, I'm still leaving fingerprints here. Here we go. I have some blue on here. I'm just going to bring some of that blue into this rock right here. It's not going to read as blue. But it just should read as some darker tone. It's like a tint of it, you know, a bluish, cool colored scheme. It'll just kind of blend in and allow this area down here to harmonize with some other areas, knowing that there's, or I don't know, being that we can visually see a little bit of a difference between just only brown right here and having some of that blue from up here within that given space, okay? going to have to uh, I'm going to have to wait for this to uh, set up a little bit there's that slathering of blue up there is really really wet <coughs> mm, excuse me I was up hiking at 8,000 feet yesterday and I'm not used to that um, but that's what we have so far okay it is really wet right here I'm having a hard time getting some of this ink to apply just because it is so wet uh, on the surface right now. Meaning that I've achieved a pretty good saturation of ink, uh, which is what I'm going for. But let's give this time some, you know, give this foundation some time to dry. And I'll come back to it so that it'll be more accepting of the additional ink that we apply to it. This can definitely get a little bit more saturated, I think, but maybe some pens will really come in handy in terms of coloring that uh, cabin right there. All right, so I'll give this some time, and we'll get right back to it. Okay, I'm back after, well, I don't know, probably an hour and a half or so. And we still have some pretty good things going on in here in terms of textures and patterns and whatnot. I really like that kind of that textured uh, memento foundation underneath that, uh, I don't know, the blue tones that have been laid in there. It's not something that, I don't know if I can really plan around though. I mean, I'd have to practice with it a lot more, but um, I do like the look. I like any kind of textural variations that, you know, kind of contribute to the overall, and that's certainly doing it, but it's it's really subtle. Uh, maybe if I did it in a darker color, of course, it would be, it would stand out a little bit more, or a lot more. Uh, but I would have to kind of get to know those colors a little bit more, and um, <clears throat> kind of just the amount to uh, to to layer into a given area. <laughs> it's a, it's not definitely not a science right now. So I'd have to go on and go off of a. I don't know, really not intuition, you know, I guess, I guess just a, a lot more experimentation needed. Okay, this brown needed something, didn't it? So I'm laying down some of this peeled paint green into that area, and I think that added, you know, kind of a nice textural, um, not textural, but uh, uh, a color statement, if it is a statement at all. <clears throat> I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now we need to take some additional colors into the sky for sure. Okay. There's not enough variation going in here. I could stamp 
you know, some more, um, some more, uh, colors or uh, not colors, but, um, uh, textures and what, and whatnot using things like clouds or whatever, or I could use this portion of the stamp again. I could use this portion right here and get some of those textures out there, but I don't think that's really going to be necessary. I'm just going to take and layer some additional tones and actually maybe I will go for some. I, I just remembered uh, maybe I can do some of that um, uh, ripped paper towel technique in here. How about like this? Yeah, I think that might look pretty good. <clears throat> we'll go for a couple different things and see how we see how it goes. Okay, you've all probably either seen or done this before. Alright, let's go with the Prussian blue. And let's just lay some of this down like so. It's a really nice um, texture and uh, lighting scheme, maybe? It's kind of a lighting scheme in that you are, or we're making um, areas around a given space lighter and darker. Okay, so we do something like that, and then we get that form down there, and it kind of goes along with the, uh, you know, the the shape of this moon. Now I'm going to do something else. So usually people go like this, and then this, and then this, and they build it up like that. But see, we have this area that's bottom lit down here, so maybe what we can do is we can kind of go like this, and we'll make, um, we'll build up these forms from the top down as well as the bottom up, okay? And that will, in turn, hopefully, kind of speak to the lighting direction that we are getting within this space, which is the sky. Okay? So that, kind of going both ways like that. It's very subtle because it is fairly dark up here. Even though that Prussian blue, I don't know, usually get a little bit more of it showing. That is Prussian blue, right? Yeah, it is. I think I have some more of that other color in my... No, I don't know. It's just not getting very dark. Okay. I was going to say maybe I had some other ink in this or something, but um, this one's a fresh one. I just cleaned all my uh, tools and I cleaned off my... tied up my desk just yesterday, so... <clears throat> okay, so here we go with that. Kind of came in from both directions. It's a, it's it's way too subtle <clears throat> right now, so what do we do? We just go up to the next value. Okay, in this case it happens to be black. Can't even tell where what rip I went with, but you have to kind of change your rips around um, your tears in the paper towel, otherwise what happens is you start the ink starts soaking through and then you get this kind of patterning of the uh, you know the paper towel, those little circles and stuff showing through. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess you can make it work for some things. Generally, I tend to think that the... I don't know. If they're less than uh, ideal in terms of, uh, you know, the desired um, pattern or texture that you'd want to see in a certain area. I guess it might look okay if you were doing it in grass or something like that. Um, where you want it to be a little bit rougher, but yeah, the clouds, I don't, I don't think so. All right, so we get something like that showing. <clears throat> All right, now I like to blend that in too, okay? Like so.
kind of making things a little bit, you know, darker than maybe I normally would, but that's just to kind of bring the uh, the value scheme within the scene a little bit darker again to kind of obscure um, some of the weaknesses and starting point uh, Uh, yeah, weaknesses that um, that we had on the surface um, when we first started this uh, kind of experiment. Experiment. It is kind of an experiment in a way for me. Just not starting with you know, I don't know your blotch. You know, it's like a. You know, one of those uh, psychological tests, what do you see in this thing, you know? As if it's from kind of a compositional standpoint. Um, what can we stamp out using this given <coughs> uh, foundation? Okay, now one of the things I haven't been doing a lot lately is because I, well, I've been doing a lot of the uh, um, quick scene types of uh, scenes and uh, I haven't been using alcohol pens as much as I have been at times in the past. I really like to uh, utilize them and uh, blend in some different colors in a very targeted manner, you know? These little brush tips. Or that's the uh, Laplumes that we use, um, kind of more of the uh, fine point tips. For my use, it, I mean, I think the brush tip feels kind of nicer, but these kind of fine point, sharp, you know, sharper tips, I mean, it does the job for what I use things for. I don't do too much kind of swooshy kind of, uh, you know, uh, applications of color. I'm usually just going for something just straight on. I do like to blend, though, for sure. <clears throat> so I'm just bringing some of these lighter tones in here and there, and I'm working a little bit lighter and darker. Bringing some of this color into these waves that's kind of reflecting some of that warmer light that I'm now adding into this moon. Add some of that on the rooftop. So I, again, I usually like to build it up starting from lighter tones. Yeah, I don't want that one, that's a little bit too. I, my ideal set would be probably be something that for most people would be, you know, maybe not quite as useful and that's like a 10% um, set. I like them really light in value so I can build things up and kind of control the um, the amount of ink that's really being applied at any given time. Um, I like to do it very freely like this, you know. I'm just adding some of this into these rocks. Okay. Get a little bit more on that rooftop there. You know, my little rooftop could use a little something. <clears throat> Let's go in there and add a little bit more divey stink to it. It's, it's a little bit too stark you know, light. And I can put some of this tone around my cabin as well. I like to go in on the vertical sides just so that the cabin seems a little bit more three-dimensional that way. And maybe on this other side you can go with a little bit more and make it darker or not, you know, it doesn't really matter. Just so long as kind of the three sides are, um, they have a little bit of variation in them. Okay, here's just a, a gray blue-gray. I don't know if I really want that, but I just want to go with something a little bit darker, okay, to make that seem a little bit uh, seem a little more three-dimensional, something like that. It's a little bit too, I had some streaks in this cabin. Okay, now sometimes when I work light to dark, then I go back with my lighter tones, like something like this, and I'll just kind of 
blend some of those darker tones in a little bit more. You can use blender pens. Typically I just use a lighter version of whatever I'm working in. Just to kind of, I don't know, give it a little bit of variation. Okay, let's see if I have something really pale. Here's a pale yellow. Okay. Let's put this right in the windows for that nice welcoming feeling. Okay. Now I just added some of the yellow in there and I just added some of the water. This is like a 10%. It's really light. That's why I like having those really light tones like that. Okay, so for me in here, this is still looking it's still looking really quite anemic. So let's see if we can't um, add some more tone to that. Let me go to a uh, the cosmetic foundation brush and let's go on with some of this black. Sometimes the black really builds up really nicely with this because it kind of puts these um, little beads of uh, ink onto the surface without kind of going through a wiping motion that would be more characteristic of the uh, mark that you would uh, leave with a, something like a stylus tool or any kind of sponging method. Yeah, we can do this around the kind of edges to the uh, perimeter to really kind of uh, frame off the uh, the imagery, and the, uh, the scene in general. See, so it's kind of building up, if you wipe it, sometimes in the attempt to apply ink on a surface that's fairly wet, and I know I let this dry a little bit, but it's still pretty moist. It's almost like it created a foundation. Which is good because it's easier to blend colors in, but sometimes if you want things to get darker or you want just the there to be more ink of a given color that you happen to be using at that given you know at that time, it's tough to apply it sometimes. So you just use um, whatever tool is the most conducive for whatever you're doing. It doesn't have to be an you know, one thing or another type of thing. I mean, if, you're, if we were painting our house and everything like that, chances are we wouldn't just use, we would say, we wouldn't say, uh, okay, do I want to use a roller or a brush? You know, you need the brush to, you know, to do the trim and things like that. And more detailed work and use something like a roller to do, you know, the bigger areas, right? Maybe you'd have even a corner thing or something like that. All right, so we're getting there. All right, I mean it's, it's you know you can stop whenever you want, but uh, uh, we can add more or what what not. But let's go into some different types of um, trees here. Okay, we have these pine trees in the background. I'm going to get the smaller version of this as well so we can go for a little bit of um, introduce some scale into this uh, foreground element here. Okay, I grabbed a couple more um, trees here. I didn't go for the smaller version of the spruce. I couldn't find it immediately. And we have a leafless pine here, but before I do that, I, I don't know, I tend, I tend to get very excited about getting onto that Versafine and adding these really dramatic um, foreground elements and done in very dark uh impressions of the you know the black but um let's add in some pigment ink first okay <clears throat> uh let's zoom in here so you can see what's going on okay where light meets dark right if you've seen my other videos Add some of this pigment ink, and I'm laying it down. I'm doing it in a very soft touch, okay? I'm not whacking it to where, you know, it's hard or anything like that. Just imagine, you know, you're applying kind of a 
powdery look, because that's kind of the look we're going after. It's a very light application. Blot off some ink first if you need to, because it can go on really thick. But you're not doing that. Everyone adds way too much, and I do too at times, so I can just kind of dab it off with my finger. Like that, you get that kind of soft spin drift off the, uh, the top of the wave, okay? See that? Or it's kind of more hazy right there. It's a great textural trick to do. It's very easy to do, but just remove most of your ink off there and you'll be good, okay? You want a soft applicator for a soft look too, okay? So try not to uh, go on to it with a really hard thing. If you get hard applicator, you get hard edges, okay? If you want soft one, try to soft. You know, I've never tried going with like a cotton ball. I had one sitting on my table here for some reason. I was thinking about trying to apply some inks with it. I mean, I have more cotton balls, but let's try this right here. Okay, I'm going to just dab in. Now, this is obviously, I mean, it's it's not it's not a detailed applicator. It's just so big, but let's just try adding this, some of this around that moon to make it, I don't know, glow. Okay. To be honest, I can barely see it. Maybe I need to apply more here. Okay. It's applying a very thin amount. Now, I wouldn't want to do this in ways, otherwise I'm going to ink up a whole area. But look at this thing right here. It's kind of making that whole area glow now, isn't it? I can do it with a Q-tip, too, but see that? See how it's much more soft and kind of hazy right there? That's if you... Okay, so if you... Nah, this works pretty good, but you're going to have to, you're going to, have, to have a kind of a big area where you'd want something like that. Maybe we can use it for our light beams and whatnot, you know. Okay. Who knows, maybe someone's going to repackage cotton balls and call it the uh, the magical mister or something like that. Misting. The magical misting uh, material? No, that sounds horrible. But the magical misting something sounds like it'd be good. And I'm just joking, because <laughs> that does happen out there in this industry. Things get, uh, no, maybe not something <clears throat> quite as common and known as something like this, but um, I don't know. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Wow. I would say that's one of the better glowing moons that we've done before, so I don't know. If you have a moon and you have a cotton ball, you might want to take a look at that. Okay, in terms of a... Uh, applicator. Okay, so we have this pen here, the gel pen. We'll have some additional spin drift coming off the top of the wave. And it's a very, it's a very crisp highlight, okay? We've done a kind of a very general, very, you know, undefined highlight, well not highlight, but lighting effect with a very soft applicator, right? Because we're adding in white. But it's very translucent, but this is a very way to go in and to accompany that very soft application of light on dark. But we can do that with a gel pen and be very precise and uh, Exacting. I'm not talking about the placement of it, but I'm just talking about the the shape of the dot. Okay, shape of the dot is very defined uh, in um what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> in comparison to gosh. It's very uh, crisp in comparison to this just general hazy overall look of uh, thin layers of uh, 
pigment ink. Okay, now I'm just adding some of this, you know, where light meets dark type of thing. Adding some of this in the light and just kind of uh, tapering it as I move out so the dots became less condensed the farther it moves away from light. Okay, so you can put a few more dots around the light and then as you move over here, spread them out a little bit, you know, kind of have it dissipate. All right, apparently I forgot to do a lot of things on this. Yeah, I forgot that misting and uh, everything before I was about to do this. And I, you know, I still want to go a little bit darker, if I may. Right here in the corners, because that, those trees down below are going to be very, very dark. So I'm just kind of going with that same value, even if it's a very small area up top here. I think that'll contain the imagery very nicely from a compositional standpoint. Okay. <clears throat> so we have something like this. Okay, all right. Oh, all right. Here comes the really big bold elements. I mean, we can say this whole shelf here is a bold area, but I don't, it's not as bold as, you know, really solid dark imagery. And something that's going to be very close to us in relation to the other objects within the scene. Okay. I'm holding a little bit longer because I'm not doing this with the stamp positioner. So if I go like this, wet and, and if it's wet into wet and I pull it off, it's going to work like a like a vacuum, and you know some of the uh, impression might not transfer over to the surface. I usually don't have too much of a problem with that because this is so dark of a color. I did something that I shouldn't have done right now. <clears throat> What I should have done was I should have masked this right here and got the imagery that's going to be back here first. And then I, you know, because now if I cover this up and I stamp over that, that's going to uh, come off because that pigment ink takes a while to dry. So I will do that over in this area and hopefully I won't disturb that first impression too much. I might do it a little bit, but... Um, Let's just do it. <laughs> okay, so there's a tree back there. Let's put a couple back on that uh, other side of the rock. I moved a little bit on that one. It's a little bit smeary. Yeah, okay, here I'll show you what you do. I'll just come up with a bigger one right over the top of it. All right, don't smear this one. Okay, see that right there? No problem. Okay. You can have these pine trees growing out of the rocks. It happens in nature all the time. You see these trees, sometimes they're big growing out of it like a tiny crack in the rock. And I think it's because the roots can just have a foothold, you know, when there's flooding and rain and uh, whatnot during the wet months. It just, it holds fast in those spaces. It's always been kind of weird for me to see that um, at times. And I used to kind of wonder, why is that tree growing out of that little crack in the rock? And I, that's my guess, though. I guess it doesn't have to compete too much, but then at some point in time you think it's just not going to get enough nutrients. 
All right, so here I'm kind of planting these trees along that. See, that's kind of adding to the overall uh, composition. Okay, so you don't even have to have them on the other side. Like I said, I can put, you know, paper towel down here, or I can come up like this and have it fully, you know, in the foreground. Like that, like that. <clears throat> Having something, you know, pretty dark right here is adding to the uh, the depth of the scene by having something even darker to contrast against lighter tones in the background. Even if it's fairly dark, it's lighter than that, so it looks farther back um, in relation to that. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to this um, the spruce large. It's not really supposed to be just kind of a bigger version of this, you know. There's different types of uh, trees that grow um, together all the time. I just saw that yesterday. Hiking around up in the National Forest. Actually, I think it was State Forest. I think there was some Douglas fir up there, and then there was some other, you know, yeah, there's probably two or three types of... Uh, Pine trees, at least, types of them. Okay, so you see what's happening here? We're getting kind of bigger shapes right here and kind of remedying that big, huge thing that was here. I, I don't think it's a problem at all anymore. I think it, we've kind of left that behind in terms of it being a kind of a problematic shape um, that was down in there. Okay, let's go with them. Tree. I really do need a, another size of block here. Okay, so this is almost too wide. Sometimes I over ink, you know, the edges of this, and it gets all over my uh, tack and peel. But tack and peel, we can just. Um, Tack and Beetle's been applied to my block here, so it's, you know, it's sticky for that temporary, um... Temporary, uh, mounting of your stamps. Okay. I'm just going to put this... I'm going to have it coming out from that area, so hopefully it doesn't look like it's in front of... Hopefully it just, you know, looks like it could be kind of in the back there. Where do I want to put it there? Yeah. Let's go a little bit lower. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Can you see it? It's really dark. There you go. Okay, so it is kind of in speaking to the uh, the theme of this. Okay, foreground value. Um, to kind of obscure some, you know, what you believe may be kind of a weaker um, area within a scene, then we just kind of subdue it and, uh, you know, having these things down here, I mean, like this, building it up, I think we've turned, uh, you know, a weakness into, you know, just another component, if not strength, of the piece by kind of having to address it and, uh, figure things out, you know, that we can utilize in the overall scheme, okay? So here's these trees in here, okay? It's kind of interesting have it, having it kind of a warmer area, you know, contrasted against um, a cool area. I usually don't do something like that in big areas. I, you know, if I do have some kind of um, uh, variations of temperature, I usually do kind of a more subtle area of warmth within cool, or I'll do a very subtle cool area within warm. And I'm not I don't know, whatever, 50, 50, not quite 50, 50, 60, 40 or something. I don't know, whatever it is. Okay, so I have these. This 
rock in here is inherently textured in the form of that um, boulders with lichen. That's what the lichen is about. You know, it's, the lichen kind of defines the forms a little bit more on that rock. Without it, it looks a little bit anemic, I think. But let's go in here and add a little bit more texture, okay? I'm just doing this with the um, tiny rock, small. Can you see that in there? It's kind of like freckled now, but it added a little crisp element within that space. Okay, now I'm looking around, looking for some other opportunities in here that can happen. I still want to go a little bit darker up here. Okay, let's go with the uh, black Marvy, which is the thing that I stamped out my other images in. Well, other images besides the, uh, the um, versifying black foreground images. Okay, that's getting a little bit darker. See that right there? I think that helps it. It kind of, see it's real bottom heavy down here, so I'm just kind of adding in that same visual weight. It doesn't have to be equal to the bottom, but as long as I have just a little bit of it, I feel that it kind of ties things together. We're saying that if it's going to get that dark down there, can we get it that dark somewhere in another area of the scene? Just when it happens to be the left and right cor top corners just to add that little framing element to the design. Okay, that's looking okay, I think. Uh, could use something more, <clears throat> I think, out in those areas, just for a little bit of visual interest. Let's try um, a couple things here. Oh, down in that rock, too. All right, so let's add a few little stars, like so. It's a little bit of visual interest, isn't it? Okay, so a few stars up here and there. Actually, quite a few, isn't it? I, I, I briefly considered the Dr. Martins, but eh, let's give that a little bit of a break for right now. <clears throat> okay, so we have this area within this um, space here. There's a lot of browns, a lot of greens, tan colors, we can bring in some of those elements in the form of our colored gel pen, if you'd like to. Yeah, there's a little bit of green in here, remember? I don't know if I should use this one. That might be a little bit too cool. bright. That one looks even brighter, but these pens I know are rather translucent in application. This one's the Shuttle Art Pen. It's very cheap feeling, but they work great. 
and they're like 10 or 13 cents each so all right so I'm just adding in some little um, yeah, it's not really a flourish because it's something that's too subtle for that <clears throat> but it's certainly an embellishment okay now we're not going to be able to see a lot of it if I add this in in an area that's the same value it might not be the same color um, as that but if I add kind of that same value let's say it's a 20% or something like that and I'm going 20% of this over a 20% brown they kind of merge a little bit because they're similar values I mean, it stands out because it's a different color, but it, it can be very, very subtle, and that's kind of what I'm going for here. Now, see over here, it gets, oh, sorry. Over here, it gets very dark, so you know, I can see those little green dots a little bit more, but the fact that this is a little bit more um, translucent than opaque works in our advantage. It's not going to work for someone that's going to want to draw or write something on black paper, probably. It might be a little bit too translucent with that black showing through where you can't really see this but on something like this it works perfectly for my needs and if I want it to stand out more then I just switch over to um, my uniball signal which which are which are more opaque okay you, can, you know they're, they're still translucent but they're just not quite as translucent as the uh, <coughs> very inexpensive shuttle art variety okay let me back up here gotta keep trying to keep it within the screen here i'm just i know it's really impossible seeing those little dots though they go on a certain uh with a certain value and it seems like when they dry they dry a little bit more um darker looking okay okay this is kind of like a okay this is the uniball signo see how much more no you can't see <laughs> it's a little bit more opaque than that green and the green and this one are about the same values but this one the, just the binder or whatever the the pigment is thicker so it just stands out more but these are like you know these are like a dollar yeah, I don't know what a two fifty per pen or something like that. The other ones are thirteen cents, so uh, I use them for their, you know, whatever their strengths might be. Okay, but ending this down like so, getting some of that texture into the rock. See that right there? So it's up here. It just represents a little bit of texture, colored texture on that colored rock. Up here, it represents stars. Um, highlighting around the clouds, highlighting on some of those rocks, uh, splashing water coming off the crest of the wave, down there it's highlights in the water. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to go overkill on this, but uh, why not? <laughs> I, I'm gonna try not to, okay. Here's the um, trees, okay. Here's your moonlight, the tree over here is to the left of the moon, so you're, we're going to put some highlights on the right side facing that moon. i got to turn this around because I'm going to, otherwise I'd put my hand in that ink right there. And that versifying ink is quite wet still. Okay, so see that? It's facing my moon, okay? We have this tree over here, but it's this tree is in more of the darkness, so I don't want to put too many highlights because I'm saying that it's in a lot of shadow, but maybe I can put a few little highlights on it or a couple, and it makes that tree stand out. <clears throat> here, let me flip this over so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's a few more highlights when this tree is over a lighter area, but when it's darker over here, you know, just a couple little dots, but look at that. Okay. Which side of the tree do we put that on? Uh, the highlights on the right hand side still because it's still to the left of the moon. Just start off with a few, you know, do, I don't know, five or six maybe and hold it at an arm's distance, get a feel for it. You know, sometimes that 
those highlights really stand out if they're against a darker background, so you don't want too many of them. All right, so over here, I'll top, you know, put a few little highlights maybe on some top sides of some of these branches because we're starting to move almost underneath the moonlight. You can put some on the other side of the thing. It's not like, oh my gosh, I put a dot on the uh, the right hand side when they were supposed to be all be on the left or vice versa. It's not like that, you know. It's not that critical. All right, now where are you going to put the highlights on this tree? There's the moon, so things would be highlighted on this side of the tree, then maybe, you know, or dominantly, you know. That would be the dominant side of the highlighting, but just to balance things off a little bit, we can put some on the other side, a dot or two, okay? Alright, let's take a look at this here. That blotchy... I guess good for something, but uh, preferably, preferably we don't start off with something like that. Shape down there is now incorporated in with this thing. We can see it right here, right? Um, but, you know, for the most part I think that we blended that in. Okay, and I went with a, you know, I had all that blue around here, so I went with a blue over brown color scheme. There was still space in here for, you know, something if I wanted it to be illuminated, I could still put it in there. So we stamped that moon in there. Uh, we did that brown cabin back there to kind of match and pair that shape in the distance with something in the foreground. Even though you wouldn't really see that in nature, you know, under a moonlight. You wouldn't have all these colors right here, but um, got a little space down here with a wave kind of, you know, coming in here. And, uh, I don't know, look at all those shapes back there. It's, it gave me something different in the background than I normally have. Uh, I don't know if I can get it again, you know, if I tried, because it was, you know, this random thing of colors that I applied in there. But um, I do like what's going on in the sky up there. Do they, I think there's a lot of um, variation, so uh, it's probably more exciting, I think, if we look at it really close than what's in here. But I think this looks nice and rich, though, and textured and... Uh, in the spirit of the scene, you might say, we have some trees right here in the distance and see how we did those in blue. But it's not to say that we couldn't have done them in black, but I just wouldn't have that shape of those trees down there, which are fairly delicate, you know, um, showing as much. So, all right. So anyway, I do like the scenes that I've come up with so far in this. Um, I wouldn't call it a series, but um, this will be the third um, piece that I've done in the spirit of that, and uh, I don't know, it just, you know, I, I have to see sometime too if I could do it. Um, I didn't before, <laughs> but it has been fun, so I've always said it, you know, these stamps, you know, can, if you just kind of keep working with things, you can kind of come up with a decent scene, I think, you know, and uh, we can utilize all kinds of different processes, okay? You can u utilize um, overlapping and layering and uh, creating foregrounds around certain things. I mean, even if there was like a impression of something in black, if we put all these things over the top of it, I don't know if we'd really be able to see it. And these things work in terms of uh, creating that type of foreground depth by having them down there anyway, okay? We can make use of um, some light that was, you know, still existing in a certain area. On this one right here, I went a little bit too much with too much ink, but what I did was I just made this area around here darker. Now this looks lighter by contrast, okay? And 
you know, certain things that were going on up in the sky that didn't have that cohesion or whatnot, if you just put in some extra layers of color over the top of it, and I think those textures of those little white dots layered yet another texture over the top in the form of, I guess they're objects, because they are stars, that can kind of, uh, I don't know, um, move visually whatever we didn't like that was already in here back one step farther you know kind of in an optical sense because we see these stars first then we're probably going to look at these um clouds you know it's all being done in you know fractions of a second i you know probably think but um anyways we push those things those undesirable marks back farther and farther we can layer more colors over them now they're back one extra step we put textures on them in the form of ripped paper towels and you move them back even more we put another layer of uh, white dots those things are the ones the things that are standing out the most so we pushed everything back even you know farther from an optical sense if not just downright covered it up okay certain things you want to stand out more then darken the areas around it. If there's certain things that we don't want to stand out, then you can darken right over them or whatnot. So there's all kinds of things you can do, okay? But just give your scenes a chance, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, and that's when you can come up with some really great techniques as well in terms of how you address things, and uh, I don't know, it causes us to think, and when we think like that, quite often, you know, we can get good results. Remember, you are really creative out there. I always say that crafters and stampers, you're probably more creative than, I don't know, 95, 99% of the public. How many people do you know that create things from nothing? And you're kind of always engaged in the spirit of learning, you know, like crafters are. More than artists, artists tend to get kind of locked into one medium. Crafters are always, you know, eager and excited about the new thing that's coming out here because we like kind of moving forward. So um, use that creativity for, you know, um, uh, subduing those things that you might encounter um, that might be a kind of a visual weakness within your given composition. It happens to me all the time, but I just bury it <laughs> in all kinds of technique in media, and we can't really see it anymore. This is an extreme uh, example of that. All right, so anyways, I hope this came in handy. I hope you liked the scene, and uh, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with it, and I think it's a fun exercise, but I don't know if I'm going to go around making ugly swatched backgrounds just to see, you know, make a point of seeing what I can do with it, but if I do come up with some of those things in these kind of test... Um, testing videos for certain types of inks. Maybe I will play around with more of those types of things in the future. Okay, thanks again for watching and for tuning into the channel.